Okay, go. For a couple of episodes, I really thought we were getting Is the hang of this. Uh, wait, okay, wait, are we starting? Train are we or starting like a diesel, a big was diesel engine? Let's, let's start off. That was going to be my first question. I'm confused because, like, who is exactly. the you in that Because in that just lose the playback like, for whoever is listening. If it's a steam train. Or does it train. refer to someone in particular? <laughs> Can we just lose the playback? <laughs> what are you talking about playback? The incessant, the, you know, the, the background. Oh, oh, the, the, the smooth. Yeah. Well, it's like the podcast hasn't started yet. You know, it's like the sort of music you hear in the, in the lobby while you're waiting for the show. I could hardly even hear the smooth jazz over the banjo lele so I never wait myself. For the show to, start. <laughs> to be fair, it was a toy banjo lele. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. Okay. Maybe just can you turn it down a hair. You can always overdub it if it's not loud. Are you talking are you talking about the smooth jazz? <laughs> The copyright, yeah, the cop, the the copyright is in the material. Or off. Please turn the smooth jazz down. I'll turn the smooth <laughs> jazz down if you stop reading from Ricardo Montalban's autobiography. <laughs> Segment one. What would happen if you drove a train underwater? Here's, here's what I want to do. Um... Instead of just taking turns saying how we would answer the question of the topic, I thought that we could take, you know, take five minutes where nobody says anything and we all just literally write down our answer and then we go in turn reading the answer so that our answers aren't influenced by one another's responses. And there w- no, please don't put on any background music. Because this would be the, a point where it would be appropriate to put on some background music and I really wished it wouldn't be in All right. Foreground music is okay. All right. When are we? Are we starting I'm now? Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure no, all of our get music a pen is foreground. I have to go. Get, I have to go get a pen and pen. Hang on. Would that be difficult? I mean, that's your problem. Seems like it'd be really easy. I'm gonna go get a pencil and paper. Hold on. Oh, uh, we're doing this. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to even get up. Uh, yeah, walking your home just, no. to your sister's house, but okay, you ain't right. in the mood for no kind of romping. Hey, I know a lady who's down for the thing, and she lives right up the way. I'm already working. Right, I'm gonna be done before you guys.
take you out on a date You're such a bore and I swear You'll wear the least sexy gowns We never stay up late anymore And that's why I got another girl up there We gotta wrap this segment up, guys. We got. I'm ready to go. Are you guys ready? Yeah, Danny, um, you're you're really in the driver's seat here. Okay, that's why I said we gotta. That's why I started driving. Mm. You, you... Oh, good point. Okay, so given the nature of this topic, as you're supposed to write out your answer without being influenced by other people, I decided right. not to prepare <laughs> an answer <laughs> ahead of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I held back from. From from preparing for the podcast, that so, was wise. This is just free form here. Um, several intrinsic problems with question. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Oh, this is nice. Uh, getting train underwater. <laughs> train. Train may not function well in immersed in water. <laughs> All right, no, this is serious. Do you need a minute? Do you need a minute? <laughs> yeah, I need, I need a minute. Here, do you want me to go first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to, you go ahead. Okay. I mean, mine's really kind of more of a flow chart. Um, <laughs> well, hold it up. Well... It's on my computer. No, no, I'll, I'll describe oh, it. Oh, I'll describe it. Well, so, so the no, no, I mean it, the, it's you can just send it to us later. Well, so the just first let him describe his flowchart. So you okay? The, you, the first little circle is is the kind of the question: Is there a tunnel and tracks that was built for the purpose of driving <laughs> trains underwater? <laughs> and then if you say yes, then uh, everything is fine. <laughs> And if you say if you say no, you have to move on to question two. Question two is: um, Is the train coal powered or diesel fueled? Um, yeah, if it's a yeah. coal powered train, um, the water puts the train engine coal fire out, but the Whoa. momentum you carries the train of into the water anyway. The train is destroyed, and everybody on the train dies. <laughs> Now, if it's a diesel train, then the water puts the train diesel engine out, the mo but the momentum carries the train into the water anyway. The train is destroyed, and everybody on the train dies. Oh, God. All right. And that's all I have. No, that's good. That is good. Oh, man. That's, I th you know, we were... I think we were kind of thinking along the yeah, same lines, I, Jeremy. Really I'll, I'll well, jump in. We were thinking. I'll jump in if I could. That, you want to go next? That you go we next. thought that maybe coal versus diesel would make a difference, <laughs> but then as we reasoned it out, it really <laughs> We just wanted to sound smart, you know. Okay. I, 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 had a, I just had a few points. I think I had six points. <laughs> Seven. Um, I have six. Uh, if you drove a train underwater, uh, number one, it would get wet. Okay. That, yeah. That's, number two. Number yeah. two. Wait. 
Do you drive a train? <laughs> is that even the verb you would use for that? I mean, you can't really control the direction a train goes, except forwards and reverse and switching, <laughs> switching tracks. No, you can spin them around. Oh, we're not supposed to comment on it. Yeah, I mean, does that count as driving, or do you use another word? Um, number three, what kind of train is it? For a steam train, the water would put out the coal fire and stop the train. So all the people Man, would we were really on the same wavelength on this one. <laughs> For a diesel electric, I don't know exactly what would happen, but I think the water would short out the electrics and it would stop and all the people would drown. Number four, who even built the train tracks going underwater anyway? Number five, if we're talking about an anthropomorphic cartoon train, I think everything would be fine. Number six, what about the channel? That's right. That goes underwater. I guess that would be okay. Ooh, what a loophole. That's, that's all I've got. Oh, man. I think we're basically in agreement. Yeah, there's no dissent yeah, so yeah, far. Really we, we thought along the same lines. All right, well, mine's not that good. Uh, do you want to hear it? Yeah. You know, I, 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 yeah. Think, yeah. I think, you know, I cover some of the same points that have already been addressed <laughs> by the group. Um, that's... So I wrote, uh, it depends on the system of locomotion. <laughs> if steam based it would be entirely impractical as the water would as the water would put out the fire <laughs> also are we assuming there is already a track laid down on the ocean floor <laughs> question mark if so who put it there, and why? There's really no is need to it? have four people on this podcast. <laughs> no, this is, you know, it's, it, it's just, pr- this, this topic really, you know, raises more questions than it answers. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm ready. Oh, man. Okay. There are many intrinsic problems with this question. <laughs> Number one, getting the train underwater. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> the train may not function well immersed in water. <laughs> okay, no, here's the difference. <laughs> Oh god! It hurts. It hurts to laugh. Okay, here's you know I I didn't um I didn't ask the uh, coal versus diesel question, but here's another here's another wrinkle: Is salt water or fresh water? <laughs> <laughs> That's another very important question that would make no difference. I would. <laughs> Okay, now here well, are the conclusions. Long, long term, the salt water could corrode the. Um, mm. Oh yeah, the that's train. the the the. That's true. The, that's ul- true. the ultimate. Sorry to, sorry to yeah, I mean, if we're train. talking about the channel, I mean, I'm sorry. sure they they. Uh, I'm sorry, they it's it's my that. fault. Danny had the floor. No, if it's the channel, you just like it'd just be convenient. Okay, here are the conclusions. I guess the train would stop. No, I guess the train would quit working and stop. <laughs> 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 Number wait, two. Wait, is there a train on the channel? Are there train tracks there? No, no, this is... Yeah, 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 there's a train. Oh, okay, okay I, I guess the train would quit working and stop. No, <laughs> number two. <laughs> Conductor would <Yeah>. drown. <laughs> All passengers the would die. The always goes down with the train. <laughs> All passengers would die. <laughs> so train would quit working and stop, conductor would drown, and all passengers would die. So I guess the group consensus is mainly that the train would be destroyed and everybody would perish. Unless, unless you had built a tunnel and tracks <laughs> to allow a train to drive underwater. Right. It's or if you modified it in some sort of like you know super futuristic James Bond kind of way. Oh, mm-hmm. 
like a submarine train. Mm-hmm. Right, or I mean, I guess silly... then you would, you know, debatedly not call it a train anymore. Or if it were like a like a Pixar style cars train with <laughs> with with eyes and a personality. Or maybe it's you kinda, not a physical train. I think I covered you did that cover that. You did cover that. It's maybe it's a train of thought. <laughs> well, well, Chris, you. you <laughs> That's where you put the stomp horn in. Segment two. Judge John Gibson. Second installment of our hit segment, Judge John Gibson. We have at least two accusations tonight. Uh, the first one, Jeremy, do you, can you explain how we got this accusation? This was an accusation made... Um, <clears throat> In the comments thread to episode 9 of Bear Friend Tea Party on our website, flowersofdisgust.com. A seemingly honest comment, not made by one of us. It wasn't me. It wasn't it me. It wasn't me. I figured John? it was like, was it, do you think it was like Farley or somebody? Probably. Oh, I, Matt Noonan was my guess. So the name that the, the I was, commenter left the name Professor Buttmoog. I bet it was Peter yeah, Noonan. Which, which made me suge- su- suspicious that it was Matt Noonan too. I did trace the IP address, and it set, and it did say that the commenter was on the Harvard University campus. Oh man, see, that's the type of uh, where I don't know anyone track. who works there. So you're thinking it was probably uh, the linguist Stephen Pinker. No, why would it? Well, why? he works at Harvard, you know. So put two and two together. I don't and nobody think else there works are that there, many right? people who work at Harvard. The fact that the fact that they identified themselves as Professor Buttmoog su- suggests a familiarity with our catalog. Yeah, for the listeners at home, uh, the, Professor Buttmoog is a character from at least two of the songs in the Flowers of Disgust <laughs> catalog. What, what and a, that's the end ones? of the story. Do I have to edit those? What was songs he in, in Bloom? Oh, he was in Bloom, Bloom of, of the, yeah. Put Bloom in Bloom of the, of the butt flower there. Come ye to where the dirt is rich and nice and kind to the feet. Come ye, be enraptured by the butt flower's gentle smell song. Come ye, bow to the nose, pass the nose, glory be the mighty butt flower. Is at first pleasant to the nose, disappears as it becomes but gross. Come ye to smell the smell and come ye to die. Come ye. Bow to the nose, Bow to the nose, President Dunn. Glory be the mighty one for our loot. Discovered in 1658 by the famous Professor Erroneous Botmoog. Come ye to smell the smell and come ye to die. Pride of the Buttflower? No, actually... Flower? No, Pride of the Buttflower is a good one. I mean, he's not in Pride of the Buttflower. He's not? I don't think so. Is he in Pride of the Buttflower? No, I don't think so. That's more of a kind of a... It's a, more of a ballad. A contemporary yeah. ballad, yeah. Gentle smell song. Pink boy. 
Oh, sweet seductress of the forest Where the dirt is brown and mild And though she will reach a hand out to guide you Though she will never let you into her heart But you may come to know the pride of the But flower has no bound Wrap you up in ribbons and anoint your and She will shower you with kisses and whispers, and you may sleep amongst her petals, but you may never see her face. And though you may leave her garden of illusion. You will never be the same again Once you have seen the pride of the butt flower has no end And you will walk in the footsteps of great dead men You will walk in the path of sorrow alone Despite your best intentions, your thoughts will wander always back. You may scatter the ashes of dignity, but you have smelled the smell, and you too must die. For you have known the pride of the butt flower has no bounds. In the absence of the universe, there is only one. Be speckled with But I figured, I sort of always thought it was Professor Buttmook singing that song. I think oh, it was Jeremy. Yeah, is it? That would take a very deep knowledge of our catalog to realize that. <laughs> well, since I, I literally just thought of that, so. Uh oh. What? Oh, never mind. Oh, so Have so you... anyway, uh, Professor Buttmoog, <laughs> Professor Buttmoog accuses John of collaborating with MC Hammer for his 1986 hit no, "The Wall," and he included a link to the music video for that, that which song, I didn't right? watch. I Did have not watch watched it either. It, now, there are it, a lot Jeremy? of. We'll put in. There are a lot of. of course, put in. I watch. Maybe I don't need to it. watch it. Maybe there are a lot I of intrinsic it. problems. Yeah, you with probably that remember. It. So, well, I guess the first thing we should do is ask John whether this is true. Yeah, yeah. John, it's absolutely true. Well, that's, that's good. That's good enough for me. I have my doubts. That's um. The truth is, I, I listened to the whole thing, and um, most of it, and uh, I think to call that piece a collaboration <laughs> is kind of overselling it. It's oh, really basically a, it's basically a, it's basically a John Gibson song where, like, you know, if you had said, like, it was, it's maybe featuring MC Hammer, but it's very clearly a work of the uh, of John Gibson and not MC mm-hmm. Hammer. I, I didn't feel like the, you know, it's like one of those things where MC Hammer comes on like and 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 like raps a verse. Yeah. MC Hammer in effect, I'm against the wall, and we got the power to make it fall. No effort, no chance to get involved. We got to come together against the wall. Degradation, segregation, and it's like that. And there's no love when the walls are dead. But it's not like the whole song was a collaboration. So I would say, if the accusation is, did he collaborate with MC Hammer? I'm gonna say no. no hold on I think a minute. It was like he a, showed up and was a guest rapper. Like that is a total yeah, collaboration. I think it was like, now, if it were a mashup after it was, the fact by a third party, that know, would not be a collaboration. I think it's. Hold on, hold a on. collaboration like isn't necessarily I think it's 50 fucking saxophonist. I John think it's, it's it's yeah. There is another me, musician named John Gibson. Is that who we're talking about? I did not listen. I did not listen to the whole song, but it seemed like basically 
it was some dude, pre- apparently John Gibson, um, even though he would have been four at the time, um, singing this dumb song. And then, like, towards the end, like, there's, like, MC Hammer is kind of, like, just, like, whooping a little. I think that you easily could have achieved that you could have this could have easily been a case of just editing in like the producers dropping in a little MC Hammer like after the fact John Gibson could he could have easily not known a thing about it uh, but part of the accusation is that this was a hit song <laughs> I've I'd never heard of this song before, and I, I'm skeptical that it was actually a hit. I mean, I think MC Hammer had a few hit songs, but I'd never, I don't think this The Wall is one of them. Well, what, are, what were they? Okay, let's, okay. Okay, MC Hammer, well, you know, of course, um, that, uh, you, you Can't Touch This. You Can't Touch This. Pray. Pray, pray. Uh, uh, Adam's you know, Groove. It, Adam's Groove, who potentially, <laughs> potentially, here comes the hammer. You know that one. Here comes the hammer. Don't hurt her. What? Oh yeah, well, I don't know what it's called. Here comes. What about Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him? Like Isn't that the album? Yeah. 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 Another one. Have you been. seen her? No, I don't Is remember MC that. Is MC Hammer one. the same as Vanilla Ice? Yes. Basically, Basically yeah. yeah. Essentially. Except the Vanilla Ice has yeah, so. only one song. Well, MC Hammer basically all the Now, time. see, I'm a little skeptical about John's story now that he reveals he doesn't even know who MC Hammer is. How can I trust him I when he says really, he collaborated really with my case that this was not a, not a real collaboration? Yeah, well, yeah I mean, but hang I'm, on a minute. Doesn't I'm that stand to reason because he was only quit. four at the time? He wouldn't remember <laughs> the collaboration. The human mem- long-term memory that's really true. kicks that's in a good, around. That's a around very good three point. or four. The, hu- the, the human, the I human mean, world. <laughs> if for that matter, how can we really believe him when he says that this is true? Then how would he? Yeah, I'm know? with Jeremy. I, I vote to acquit. In the case of John Gibson yeah, vote, collaborating with MC Hammer, I vote to I'm, acquit. I would acquit. vote to quit this topic. <laughs> I thought this was going really so well. You, I think we have. I think wrong, we have dude. three votes to acquit. One of them being a <laughs> pun, but I think we'll take it. I'm gonna call that one not guilty. Not guilty. Segment three. What's happened to the Bobcat Bind? Oh my God! Have you guys been okay. to Santa Fe lately? No. Okay. No. I'm gonna blow your mind. You were you were in Santa Fe for Thanksgiving, Jeremy. That's not I guess that's lately not too recent. <laughs> yeah, but the the Bobcat bite hadn't yet changed ownership. Oh, no, 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 go no, no, to no, the Bobcat bite on I don't Thanksgiving. Think it has changed ownership. Blow blow my mind. Okay, they closed it. Right, it's closed. Right. They uh-huh. the owners reopened another restaurant in downtown, and it's called the Santa Fe Bite. What is where the bobcat it's bite like used to be? a fucking gun shop or something. <laughs> no, no, oh, no. really? It, it was a gun shop before it was the bobcat bite. Uh, I think it's probably vacant now. We could probably turn it into the next band. <gasps> so Major don't... opportunity. I Yeah, that would make so, a sweet no, I heard... recording studio. The way I heard it. I mean, just heard... a fucking filling station. So apparently, yeah. like, the... I, I guess they were just renting the space or the land or something. And uh, whoever was in charge of that this. decided to, like, up the rent. And they were like, well, fuck this. We're going to go downtown where it's cheap. Uh, um, or where we, it's not totally inconvenient. <laughs> are, well, it's inconvenient Are they open, for like, us. more than a few hours every week? <coughs> they, I think they Do still they have, have... normal business hours? They, I think they still have kind of weird hours, but... Uh, honestly, like, none of this would be so bad, except for the fact that like they completely turned it into this like bullshit Hollywood version of the Bobcat Bite. It's like I mean, it's disgusting. It's like the Hard oh. Rock Cafe or something. Oh, well, I you know, and they serve like I, more I, than four I things eat. now. 
Should we explain what? for the benefit of listeners what the bobcat bite is, or are we just I think everyone knows what the bobcat bite is? All four of our listeners know what the bobcat bite is. We'll just put a link in we the show notes. We have 13 subscribers at present. Whoa. What? I know. That's according to Jeremy. I didn't even go to school with 13 people. Did Did you drive by the site of the old bobcat uh, no, bite? No, we didn't, actually. How could you not do that? Well... See, I want to well, know what's going the on direction. there. See, it's like one minute in the other direction. We were busy. Like, you know? we had from all my reading, we had a lot of uh, my... Shamayo cocktails to make at the house. <laughs> too sure. Based on my reading, mm-hmm. um, you know the 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 previous owner, the previous people running the Bobcat Bite, who now are running the Santa Fe Bite, were not the original. Bobcat bite owners. They'd only been running it for like five years or oh, ten you might years be right or something. About that. Been there Correct for... me if I'm wrong. Yeah. The so, original owner wrong. was Bobcat Goldthwaite. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think it was actually Gilbert Godfrey. What else needs to be said? <laughs> that, and that's the end of that topic. Segment four. Let's all mute our headphones. For 13 minutes and record audio completely independently of each other. Oh, yeah. We can just, why don't we just end the podcast? Okay, I'm, I'm taking off my headphones now. Okay, well, good night. Wait, 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 wait. So that okay. yeah. it doesn't have to be Let's 13 go. minutes, then it could just be like 13 seconds. All right, good night, everybody. This is the first of two programs covering forklift operation. Here in part one, we'll look at operating techniques. Part two covers preventive maintenance. But before we get to all the details, let's take a quick look at how the forklift works. To begin with, of course, there are the forks. As you know, the forks can be raised and lowered, but they can also be tilted backward and forward. The forks can be spaced close together or far apart. Normally, the forks have to be close together when you're working with special attachments like this one for moving barrels. And the forks should be as far apart as possible when you're working with standard size pallets. The reason for that is obvious. You want as much support as possible at the sides. Okay. Keep the load from falling off. Here we go. All forklifts have these three features. Raising and lowering, tilting, and force spacing. But as you can imagine, just about every equipment manufacturer makes one. Sometimes it seems like we have all of them. The differences aren't really that great. As I said, all forklifts do the same thing. So it's just a matter of getting used to the controls. On this machine, you raise and lower the forks with the control on the left. And Big gorilla the at the, the LA right. Zoo. Snatched the glasses right off my face. The farther you took the keys to my BMW. So until you get used to Left me here to feet, take his place. I wish the ape a lot of success. I'm sorry my apartment's a mess. Most of all, I'm sorry if I made you blue. On this forklift, you can I'm betting both the gorilla will too. They said Jesus will find you wherever you go. But when he'll come looking for you, they don't know. In the meantime, 
time to keep your profile low. Gorilla, you're a desperate. As far as gear shifting goes, forklifts have forward and reverse. On some machines, the shifter is on the floor. On others, it's on the column. The important point about shifting is this. Always come to a complete stop before shifting. He built a house a on a liquor of land. He called it Villa Gorilla. <laughs> now I hear he's getting divorced. Laying low at the massage, of course. And it's usually in the same place. You're right, on the floor. The low range gives the machine more power and less speed. And that's just what you want when you're working. So don't use the high range except for traveling around the yard. Then the ape grew very depressed. Okay, that's how forklifts work. Went through work. transactional now analysis. Operating. Beginning with start. He plays racquetball and runs in the rain. Still now, even though we have several types of forklifts, you can follow this procedure for start and all the of them. Zoo. First, make sure the forklifts are set and all of the controls are in neutral. Took then the key to my B and W and start it up. Let me hear you If the engine take doesn't start place. within 30 yeah. seconds, it's best to stop for a few seconds and then try again. Even though you can start the engine by cranking it continuously, you're just putting more strain on the starter and the battery than you have to. So wait and try again. In cold weather, you'll probably have to use the choke. But make sure to push the choke in as soon as the engine starts running smoothly. If you leave it out too long, you'll flood the engine. There's one more very important point about starting. You have to let the engine idle for a few minutes so the hydraulic oil pressure can build up in the system. Without the oil pressure, the forklift's no stronger than you are. And if you try to pick up a heavy load, it'll come right back down. Yeah. So always let the engine warm up for a few minutes and operate the controls for lifting and tilting before doing any work. In fact, it's a good idea to run the force all the way to the top and back down again. That way you get a good coating of oil along the full length of the cylinder. Just make sure there's enough overhead clearance. Lifting heights will vary among the different models, but as you can see, it's way up there. And that's startup. All controls in neutral. Emergency brake set. Don't crank the starter for more than 30 seconds. Let the engine warm up for a few minutes and operate the hydraulic controls before working. Now let's look at operation. When you're sure the forklift is ready for work, raise the forks about six inches off the ground and drive ahead. In fact, whether you're carrying anything or not, you should keep the forks close to the ground. When the forks are raised, you can't see as well. And it also makes the machine top heavy. For the most part, forklifts are used to load and unload pallets and to move them from one place to another. And for a job that looks so simple, there are sure are a lot of things to keep in mind. To begin with, you should take a quick look at any load before you move it. The load should be stable, safely arranged, and no heavier than the forklift's load capacity. You're just asking for trouble if you try to move something that's not secure or too heavy. Yeah. When you approach the pallet, go slow and keep the fork parallel to the ground. That way the fork will go all the way back through the pallet. Next, raise the fork slightly and tilt the load back. Delay panel. And remember, always travel with the load close to the ground, no higher than six inches. One more step. 
To unload the pallet, just reverse the procedure. First, tilt the load forward until it's parallel to the ground. Then lower the forks and back out slowly. Keep in mind that it's the rear wheels that do the steering. The back end swings out every time you turn. In wide open spaces, it's no big deal, but be careful in close quarters. It swings out a lot more than you might think. And always look before you back up. It only takes a couple of seconds for someone to walk behind you. Now, as I said earlier, you should use the low gear for working and the high gear for traveling. But that doesn't mean go fast just because you're in an open space. A sudden stop on a forklift means at the very least losing the load. As you've seen, operating a forklift requires a great deal of attention on your part. And there's more. Always be aware of the overhead clearance and the side clearance you need. A lot of the loads can be bulky. In fact, some loads are so big you can't see over them, even when the forks are only six inches off the ground. If that's the case, drive backwards. Don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. You should always back down ramps, too. Again, there's no sense in taking unnecessary risks. And that's pretty much it for working with pallets. But there's one more very important point I want to make. Whenever you load or unload a truck at a dock, make sure the truck's back wheels are blocked so the truck stays in place. Ow! If the truck starts moving while you're on the ramp, you could be seriously injured. Okay, now let's look at working with barrels. We have a couple of special attachments to use that work quite nicely for moving barrels. For this one, all you have to do is move the fork closer together and hook up the attachment. This attachment is even easier to use. All you have to do to hook it up is slip the attachment over one of the forks and hammer it lightly in place. But use this attachment only for moving barrels that have a lift at the top and adjust the fork so the attachment catches onto the barrel just under the lift. After that, you can follow the same procedures as you follow for working with pallets. Keep the barrel about six inches off the ground. Go slow and stay alert. I really can't emphasize these points enough. One of the big dangers in working with a forecast is that you get into a rhythm. Operating the controls becomes automatic, and you begin to perform all the operations quickly. That's dangerous. As you saw earlier, a person could walk behind you in the short time it takes to get a load. Always, always look before you back up. Looking has to become as much a part of your operation as moving a lever. Don't rely on your backup a lot. A lot of people tend to ignore them after hearing them for a few hours. You've been listening to Bear Friend Tea Party, the world's only podcast where some guys uh, goof around and talk about random things and try to be funny. If you enjoyed Bear Friend Tea Party, you can find us on iTunes or at www.flowersofdisgust.com. Uh, you can email Bear Friend Tea Party and email us at bearfriendteaparty at aol.com and ask your questions or comments about the show. Accusations uh, are the Judge John Gibson segment. Uh, 
you can also reach us on the telephone and the number that comes always is 503-754-8096. That's 503-754-8096. You can reach us on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter at, um, at Burfriend to Party. That's at B-R-F-R-N-D-T-P-R-T-Y. Hello? Hello? Um, I believe the $20 <laughs> offer is still open. First listener to call in not related to us and demonstrate that they have actually listened to an episode of Bear Friend Tea Party will receive $20, a check for 20 big dollars. Um, I think that's it for the evening. Um, my name is Christopher Winter. Uh, it's my pleasure to broadcast to you tonight with D. Gunnard Beamish, Jeremy Mullis from North Carolina, and Jonathan Bumpers. Uh,
everybody. Dump and piss and puke on police cars. 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 